All right, I've got a real treat for you guys. This is what's considered by many to be the world's worst tractor. It is a real deal. Hilarious. Now I'll title this video somewhat facetiously because that is what people say about these, but I personally don't believe it. I think this little thing is great. I purchased this tractor non-running for I think $600. It might have been $650. The way you see it here, I've got about $1,500 in it, and this is its third season with me. It's going great. I'm out here mowing some trails with it with, I think that's about a five or six foot flail mower. Does really well with it. And today, I just wanted to make a review of this machine. Now I'll start off by talking about the engine on this thing. This is essentially a Soviet produced Deutz clone. The Soviets ended up with a lot of essentially 1930s technology German Deutz air-cooled diesel engines. And, you know, people from some parts of the world are just really, really good at reverse engineering stuff. And so they figured out how to build these locally, and they actually still produce them to this day. The thing to know about these tractors is essentially what determines the power level of the engine is how many cylinders they have, which sounds obvious, but, you know, what I mean by that is this is obviously a two-cylinder version. There's four cylinder versions, I think three and six cylinder versions. It's just how many of these cylinders they want to string together uh, is what determines how large or how small they make the engine. As you can see, this is, of course, the two cylinder version. Sounds kind of cool. And you know, for being a two-cylinder machine, it actually runs surprisingly smoothly. Okay, I'm not saying it's refined. The exhaust note sounds like, you know, 80-year-old technology. But as far as two-cylinder stuff goes, it runs a lot smoother than a lot of what's out there. Now, I'll tell you guys, I really like this tractor. I honestly do. Not just dollars for dollars, you know, how little I spent on it and how much use I've gotten out of it. But it's a very, very solidly built machine. I think the reputation that this equipment has is somewhat unfair. Of course, your mileage may vary. Mine's been great, but, you know, that's a sample size of one. What I really think about these machines is that they're essentially newer production, quality level equivalents of like 1940s, 1950s American made equipment. We're talking the good stuff. All right, we're talking like International Harvester, you know, the old two cylinder John Deere's, just in terms of like how clean the castings are and how beefy everything is built. That's what they remind me of. The advantage, however, is you get an ultra reliable diesel engine instead of having to deal with carburetors. I don't know why people say these things are so bad. You know, I've gotten a lot of use out of this one. It served me great. So, yeah, I'll show you guys around this thing here. You know, one thing I haven't seen on anything else this on anything else comparable. This machine actually has oil bath front hubs, which on a two-wheel drive tractor is basically unheard of. They did a really good job with that. It does not have power steering. So you got to keep in mind, you know, you got to be careful to not put your thumbs on the inside of the steering wheel. Otherwise, if a front wheel falls in a hole, you know, kick real bad and it can cause injuries. So we got that. It takes, uh, I think these are standard 24, uh, 28 inch wheels, which for a tractor of this horsepower level is very large. That's one thing I like about it. These larger wheels are great for going over rough terrain and so forth. A lot of tractors with only about 25 horsepower, they don't have wheels nearly this large. And uh, this gives you a real advantage working on rough ground, which is nice. Standard 540 PTO. It is not a live PTO. That is one downside. So you can see this one has the overrunning clutch on it. So that way the mower will not push the tractor when you go to stop. Uh, it's got that Eastern style final drive like the Zetters use. Kind of weird, but does seem to work. And, uh, you know, one weak point of these tractors was, in the case of this one, was the three-point hitch. 
you know, three point stuff was never really designed correctly. It was a stupid design. They just, they never really got it to work right. Yeah, it's a real operation to hook up three point equipment. It takes floor jacks and pry bars and ideally multiple, I mean, it's, it's really a nightmare. So I don't like three point stuff in the first place, but this three point was, even by three point standards, it was especially bad. Uh, there wasn't really a way to secure the lift arm, so they're always banging around down here. It's just, you know, not the most three-point hitches are good, but that one was especially jankety and rattly and just sloppy and equipment's banging around back and forth. Oh, it was horrible. So I just, I got rid of that. And uh, pin hitches, as far as I'm concerned, are just unusable. I, they're, they're atrocious. Pin hitches are, are something that should have stayed in the horse and buggy days. I convert all my stuff to pintle hitch uh, attachment, so that way, you know, it just fucking hooks up without any drama. You don't need pry bars. It doesn't slam around half. Yeah. Anyway, so as you can see, I built this custom hitch for this thing, and uh, now you you know you just hook and unhook implements in seconds with, without any issue. So that's uh, that's that. That's the back of the tractor. I'll talk a little bit about this engine here. A few weak points about these things: the injector pumps just always leak out the top a little bit. It can't be fixed. That's the short answer. That's just what they do. Uh, no one really knows why. It's just the way they're designed. It loses a drop or two of fuel every time you open up the throttle. Um, but, you know, people on forums have messed with these extensively. Yeah, that's the conclusion they come to. That's just what they do. You can't really do anything about it. Uh, so, yeah, we got that. Now, I'll tell you, one of the best things about this tractor is there's an astronomically low maintenance cost. It doesn't take paper air filter elements that's an oil bath air cleaner uh, it doesn't take an engine oil replacement filter that is a centrifugal filter those work really well uh, it's an excellent design you know what's really interesting is it doesn't even use a hydraulic filter that's replaceable that's basically a strainer and you take it apart and clean it out and so the only filters you actually buy normally are the fuel filters for it now, I ended up going a slightly different route. Okay, another issue with these things is they're incredibly difficult to prime. It's got this goofy little primer pump, which looks like some of the other Western ones, but it just doesn't work. They're, they're, they're terrible. So, I just put a universal 12-volt fuel pump on there. Now, the tractor will prime itself in seconds. And, uh, yeah, it works great. So, that's just wired in. Anytime the key is on, it's got power. I also wanted some more easily available fuel filters, so I bought that generic. I think those are made for like marine diesels, but yeah, they're they're pretty cheap. They work really well. As you can see, that's the fuel filter set up on this. Now, you know, one of the main issues people bring bring up talking about these are the parts availability. You know, sometimes you have to get a little creative. For example, that starter solenoid, that's just a usual automotive one that I picked up from a local auto parts store. This is the glow plug on it. it. It has one glow plug. That's another thing if you live in a cold environment. I mean, these things are made for use in subarctic regions. So not only does it have a glow plug, it also has an engine decompression system. So, I mean, these things will start at like, so I'm told, obviously I haven't tried personally, like negative 30, negative 40 Fahrenheit. Now, that glow plug is actually for a Duramax truck. The glow plug on this thing when I got it was broken, like the ceramic was, I don't, I don't really remember, but it, it wasn't reusable. So I measured the threads and it turns out that that's the same thread pitch that Duramax diesels use. So I bought exactly one Duramax glow plug and I've only used it a couple times, but you know, it has worked flawlessly. So we got that, um, you know, gauges, got a little creative with that. Just a standard generic aftermarket 12 volt deal. This gauge is for my oil pressure. That's actually from a surplus center, believe it or not. <laughs> Those are standard hydraulic fittings and then like just the usual rubber hose. That, this part was one of the only parts I've had issues with since I bought it. That's a aftermarket oil pressure gauge. It just randomly started spewing oil everywhere. So I Fabra fucked this one on when I needed to get the tractor back in service. It's got this, uh, Temperature gauge, I'd say coolant gauge, but obviously it's an air-cooled diesel. So it reads in metric, of course, you can see we got some Cyrillic characters written in there. 
Uh, yeah, we'll talk about that. This thing does overheat sometimes. That is a downside. And then a standard aftermarket battery disconnect and uh, key switch. So yeah, uh, the air-cooled system is great for what I use the tractor for, which is light jobs and odd use. It's really nice for moving, you know, trailers around and wagons around and light pulling because it's, it's pretty small, you know, you can fit it down trails easily, which I like, but unfortunately, if you're running it at full load, it will overheat. Okay, much like the injector pump, losing the occasional drops of oil there's just nothing you can do about it that's just what they do yeah that's just all there is to it okay um yeah the usual advice is to make sure that the screens are clean and that there's no grease and oil built up on those cooling fins because that's how the engine cools obviously and what it does it's a forced air system there's a uh you know fan belt there runs a fan and that forces air through and then out the cooling fins Okay, I had this thing meticulously clean. I took this all apart and put industrial degreaser on here. I mean, I had it spotless, still overheats. So I just kind of accepted that. If it's going to be working hard, you can only run it like, you know, 20 minutes at a time. But for utility tractor type stuff, you know, pulling a hay rake, running a smaller PTO generator, running a PTO wood splitter, things along those lines. If it's half load or less, it's it's fine. It'll sit there all day. It won't overheat in my experience. Usually. Uh, it did overheat on me raking hay when it was probably like 120 degrees or something, but that's Texas conditions. And I don't know why I was running an open station tractor when it was that hot. Any, any, anyway, yeah, overall, it's pretty good. Okay, the reliability is superb. You turn the key, it'll start. Uh, the fuel usage is honestly not that great. Everybody, <laughs> everybody says these two-cylinder diesels should be insanely light on fuel. Mine just isn't. It's it's okay at best. The main advantage to these things is the super low cost and the high reliability, and the fact you get a lot of features with these you don't on a lot of other Western equipment. You know, like the oil bath front hubs, for example. Another thing that's kind of neat. It's easy to work on that's the hydraulic pump it's on the outside of the transmission and that lever right there actually lets you turn off the hydraulics so that's real nice uh, especially if you're in a cold environment it makes it easier to start the tractor I turn them off just because I don't really use them uh, so parts availability is actually surprisingly it's been great it really has like these hydraulic hoses here came from Ukraine <laughs> Uh, I ordered them and, and they showed up like 10 days later. Okay, it's not the fastest thing in the world, but especially for common stuff, you know, like the fuel filters, I used to buy those from, I don't remember where those came from, somewhere in Eastern Europe. It's honestly not bad. It's really not that big of a deal. You just, you know, you can't count on having things the next day. It might not be the world's greatest tractor for someone who needs you know, for someone who can't go a couple weeks without equipment. But for a lot of homesteading applications and so forth, it's great. You can see this is stamped in here, the original manufacturer. I'm told that's pronounced Vladimiric. Not really sure, but this tractor was known as a T25 and they're still used all over Eastern Europe to this day. You can see it even has a little front hitch there. That's a shop-built hitch pin. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, it served me really well. One thing that I'll mention that I forgot to is I changed the oil in this thing and I gave it synthetic diesel oil, which is thinner because I wanted the synthetic rating because obviously air-cooled engines get really hot. And surprisingly, somehow that helped it not overheat nearly as bad as it used to. So I'm really happy about that. Uh, yeah, I replaced that temperature sensor there. That was also somewhere from Eastern Europe. Showed up in a couple weeks. Just not really a big deal. So yeah, overall, I'm really happy with this thing. I've gotten a lot of use out of it. Common complaint about these things is that they are uh, a little awkward to operate. That one definitely has some truth in it. We'll talk about that. The seat on mine was destroyed. I made the mistake of assuming that all these aftermarket seats have spring suspension. This one absolutely does not. So that was one lesson learned. All right, yeah, I'll show you how this thing works. Clutch, pretty obvious. Then you got the main gear shift, which is fairly normal, except neutral is up and down instead of side to side. And then you got this uh, 
gear reduction, like multiple range, secondary gear shift, which is kind of weird. Uh, I don't even remember if I have it in this side or this side, but the way I use it is that's what controls your forward and reverse. It's almost like a shuttle shift, almost. And uh, I don't really mess with the right gear shift. So we got that, and it has brakes. This is one of the pleasant surprises about this tractor. Uh, I can't believe I'm saying this, but the, but the brakes on it are actually phenomenal. Especially for old tractor standards, this thing will stop on a dime. I've never even adjusted them. They work amazingly well, even with a pretty heavy trailer behind it. So yeah, I think that's about everything there is to talk about here. PTO selector there. And uh, yeah, and then there's hydraulics up here. I rebuilt that valve block with parts also from Eastern Europe, and that did not take very long at all. It was actually really easy to do. Mine used to be leaking. But yeah, it served me really well. One thing I'll say, I don't know if it's just because this is a two-wheel, uh, two-cylinder rather version, but the exhaust note is particularly offensive. Animals hate it. They will take off running, even animals who, you know, are used to other tractor exhaust notes. Uh, yeah, this is not a machine to run without hearing protection. It's surprisingly loud. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, people can hear this thing from like half a mile away easily. So, yeah, might as well start this thing up here. Hit the old clutch. Confirm this is in neutral. Battery disconnect. Ignition, which is basically on this just the fuel pump plus the, uh, all these lights that I still have to wire and I just still haven't gotten around to. Okay, so I will pull this engine decompression lever just to demonstrate it and give it some throttle. Starts right up, I love this thing. engage try to minimize clutch wear by getting it going and then we'll open up the throttle we'll do a little mowing here Position. Back to mowing. 